Well, this is it. My biggest comic book collection purchase ever. It required that 20 foot long U-Haul truck that you just saw. It took a year to negotiate why it took that long, how much I paid for it, what were the complications with the negotiations going back and forth. All that is coming later towards the end of the video. But right now I wanna show you what it was like a week before prepping to bring all of these comics to primetime treasure headquarters. All right, so this is the week before the big purchase and this is where we are going to store it temporarily. Uh, but I need to clean up all this stuff that is built up over the winter time. So we take a little spring cleaning day in uh, preparation. And so uh, hopefully it's gonna look a lot different uh, pretty soon. All right, so I'm definitely making some good progress because I got the garbage can, the filing cabinet, and the metal bin that was storing all of the basketballs and sports equipment. That's all out of here, so that's very good. And I uh, also just picked up some wood pallets. Uh, you could see those right here. Uh, I'm probably gonna need more than that uh, for what I'm getting, but uh, this will at least uh, suffice for now. Uh, so we could put those on the floor and safely store uh, these heavy boxes. All right, so as you could see, uh, we did decide to move all of the comic books out of that corner. So the collection that comes in will be the only thing comic related uh, in the garage. The cardboard has been significantly condensed and nested. And uh, we have a total of six pallets uh, that I picked up. And so uh, we're all set to lay those on the ground. And next thing to do is pick up that U-Haul. All right, here we go. One of these monsters is mine. So I just got to figure out which one it is. Uh, they said it had some kind of dragonfly on the back of it. I wish I had the one that had the shark on it, but uh, let's see, dragonfly, dragonfly. Well, no dragonflies over here. I really wish I had the stingray one. There we go. We got a dragonfly right over there. I'll take a dragonfly. This is it, this is the big boy. I never drove one of these before, so I'm wondering how this is gonna go, <laughs> but this is the size of the vehicle. Um, yeah. So let's get on the road and get to that comic collection. And we're off. <laughs> I can't wait to get this collection. All right, well, I just arrived and as you could see inside the truck, it is pretty spacious. So it gives me a lot of room. Uh, the collection should definitely fit in here. My only other option up from this was 26 feet from the 20 footer that you see here. So hoping that this is sufficient. All right, just loaded the first ones on. A lot more to go. All right, so I'll tilt the camera down in a moment, but uh, as you can see, the first row is complete. And what we're gonna do is crisscross intersect them so that the comic boxes lock in place because we don't want them moving around uh, during transport. But you can see that here, I'm starting that process. So we'll just take this one as well and move that over and then they just lock in all right now a couple of other general tips uh, number one is that you want to make sure you are distributing the weight evenly and also make things easier for yourself so that you're loading from the back front so it wouldn't make sense for me to put a whole initial layer on the ground and then have to step over them and walk to the back so i'm going three high i'm putting the lightest stuff on top and then you know depending on how much is left if i need to go another level high i could and uh, it also has uh, this as an option, uh, which is neat if I needed to put some other boxes, but we still have a lot more to go. So this is just your first little sneak peek because when I was looking through the hole there, I saw my favorite comic book character, the one and only Silver Surfer. So, you know, you can see a lot of these are bagged and boarded already, so that's cool. And uh, this is just a, a lot of nice uh, 1980s a Silver Surfer, just for example. Uh, awesome, there's Galactus. I'm just so pumped up about this collection. So as you can see, we're still making progress and this is just one of the 
many Spider-Man boxes. And uh, you can see here, we've got the Venom and Maximum Carnage series. I mean, the entire thing is here, it's crazy. So this entire box is all uh, amazing Spider-Man. So look at that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's insane. Oh, and there you go, 362 and good old 361. Awesome. So I started just peeking through a few boxes and of course, as I was looking in here, what starts staring up at me? Yes, we've got the ladies. I can't escape them. <laughs> They're always following primetime around. Play that saxophone music. Hey, primetime. I love how you move those comic boxes. So this stuff had been stored for all this time in this person's basement. And when I originally came to look at the collection, that's where I saw it was in the basement. So we're loading this stuff up and we still got a lot to go, but he says to me, hey, I've got six extra long boxes in the garage. So I didn't even know that was part of the deal. So six extra long boxes, awesome. All right, so we're done with long boxes, but now he has a lot of boxes of comics that are in miscellaneous sizes. So there's a lot of them in these computer boxes. Some have lids, some don't. Just for organizing purposes, uh, what we're gonna do is take the ones out that have the lids on them just so I have more uh, stability and then we'll figure out what to do with the ones that don't have lids. So I'll show you something that kind of cracked me up because it's one of my favorite comic book characters and he has a whole box uh, devoted to it. Let me show you. It's the one and only Gru the Wanderer. I read this all the time as a kid and he's got newer Gru's and uh, older Gru's in here. Uh, it's just awesome. I love this character. And uh, he's also very collectible, by the way. So if you ever see anything related to uh, Gru, there you go, right there. And his dog, Referto. I love Referto. Um, definitely look into picking it up, especially if you find any of the uh, trade paperbacks. Uh, those are highly collectible. And then, like, as another example, you know, here's a whole box devoted to uh, Web of Spider-Man. So uh, we've got lots of just amazing classics in here. Uh, it's just, I, I just cannot wait to start digging through this some more. So sometimes these random boxes are more fun to go through than the traditional comic boxes because you never know what kind of stuff is thrown in there. Now, I've sold these before. You can check the comps on them. They sell really well. Uh, they're the handbook for the Marvel Universe. So they have all the fat cards and everything and they're in the original binders. So, and we've got uh, two of them here. So there's some magazines as well. And, um, you know, some graphic novels too. So we got some Judge Dredd. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, it looks like we have a whole bunch of posters as well. And here we have the original New Mutants in the Marvel graphic novel. So that's cool. I wonder if it's a first printing. Let's check it out. Let's see. That would increase the value if it was fifth printing. All right, still, still cool to have all these posters and just a whole bunch of random stuff. I mean, what's this? Oh, check that out. <laughs> Hope it's not colored. No, it's not colored. Awesome. What year is this from? 1990. That's super cool though. I'm pumped up. Wow. All right, I got to get back to more boxes here, but oh, this is so awesome. All right, so I think we've got all the ones with the lids and now we start dealing with the ones that don't have lids. Like right here, this one is so heavy, it's insane. This is like two long boxes in one. I, for those of who are not into comics, I keep referencing long boxes. That's a long box right there. And this is what we call a short box. So gotta get the other ones without lids and start laying them down here in some kind of strategic way. So I was just condensing what was in this box into here. And sure enough, look what I found. Married with children, Christina Applegate cover. I used to have a t-shirt when I was a teenager that said, I married Christina Applegate. <laughs> and uh, here we've got a Lady Death foil cover. 
I mean, this is just insane. I can't even believe it. There is Silver Age stuff in here. I don't think there's much in terms of Golden Age. There's modern stuff too, but it's great modern stuff, not junky modern stuff. So here's another monstrosity I just brought up. I mean, look at the size of this box, how many comics are in here. That's why it makes it very difficult to estimate piece count, but as you can tell, it's a massive, massive amount. Oh, and if you were wondering if this collection has Star Wars in it, there's tons of it. And of course, one of them has to be in a Jack Daniels box. That's a old joke for longtime prime timers. All right, we are all loaded up. I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you exactly what it looks like from that perspective and uh, made a deal for one last thing at the end. All right, so this is the last item that we negotiated a deal for. It was here about a year ago when I came and it was still available when I asked for it. This is the 1976 Shogun Warriors Dragon Toy. It's very difficult to find this in the original box. I always tell you to look for a vintage Mattel, especially if you could find it in the original box. It's also in excellent condition. Uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, just let me take this lid off. Uh, there you go. Comes with the original battle axes and it still works. So uh, that's amazing. I'm pumped up about this. I should be able to get about $500 for it. So uh, the deal on this was $200 firm. Uh, and I just paid it, especially considering uh, all the negotiations that went back and forth with being able to get this collection and that he gave me six extra long boxes that I wasn't expecting. So uh, that was a no-brainer for me. All right, so we're all done, and it took about three hours to load everything up. Uh, he did help me uh, carry some of the stuff up from the basement and put it up on a banister area, so I just grabbed it and carried it out to the truck. We are talking about Masters of the Universe at the end, and uh, he gave me this as a parting present, so that was very nice of him. And then I hung out here a little bit afterwards, just doing some stuff on my phone, and he ran out and he brought me out another box of comic books. So overall, I am very pleased and it's time to unload this stuff. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to do this ever since I saw Chuck Rosansky pick up a huge collection of comic books in an 18-wheeler. This is not an 18-wheeler, but one day when I retire, we'll do the 18-wheeler thing, but this is just a step up and I can't wait to open this and unload it. So we are back here at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. Uh, we got to start unloading this. And so uh, what we have here is I laid down the first pallet and we're going to stack long boxes back here. And then eventually these pallets are going to come out here and we're going to have long boxes here. And then we'll figure out what to do with these ones later that don't have lids on them. Eventually what I want to do is get them into long boxes. All right, so everything is unloaded thanks to Mrs. Primetime and the kids and a neighborhood friend also helped us out. So it was a lot easier unloading it than loading it. Um, Mrs. Primetime had a great idea of moving the other comics that we had in here out. So this is part of the collection that I just purchased. So we have it elevated on a pallet. In fact, everything's elevated on pallets, including all of these long boxes here and then uh, all of these long boxes here. So this is great, you know, if any water gets in the garage, we're nice and safe uh, and protected. Uh, so uh, then these are the ones that have the lids on them for the most part, so these stacked up against this pallet really nicely. And then this one here and this one over here are more of these random miscellaneous boxes. And so the goal eventually will be to get these out of here and get them into long boxes or just get them sold, just so you know, we could start knocking these pallets out. So uh, having the pallets has been absolutely 
uh, very important for helping us organize it. And also, you can see here that we created these little walkways so that we could get around and access all the books and make sure that we could still access the electrical paneling uh, if we need it. So uh, we're super excited and can't wait to get started. All right, you probably have a lot of questions such as how many comic books are there? It's hard to give an exact number for the reason I described earlier, but a conservative estimate is there's about 50,000 comics there. Now you're probably wondering how I got the collection. The way I got the collection is through my Craigslist ad. I've talked about this before in some of my videos. I'll link to one of them up top. The Craigslist ad, which cost me three bucks a month now, it used to be free, but it's the number one way that I source massive private collections. This is the biggest one by far, but if you've been watching this channel for years, you've seen me get other ones and it's not just comics. Uh, now, in terms of why this negotiation took a year and how much I got all this for, well, he initially wanted $15,000 for the collection. When I went out there, I was totally blown away. Initially, all he did was send me a few pictures that only showed small sections of this 30-year collection of his. And so I was totally blown away when I went there and went down into this basement and saw that it literally took up an entire section of the basement. And when he started taking the boxes off, uh, it was just amazing to behold because he literally was going down caverns like he's laying on top and I just see his body go down into the openings of all the comic boxes that he's taken out it was crazy. So my imagination was like going wild and everything like and he's just started taking the box out. You know, I'm thinking what must be on the bottom that he hasn't seen because he's saying there's boxes he hasn't pulled out in 10 years. So uh, treasure hunter in me is going nuts, right? So I start, you know, I go back, I made multiple trips. This is obviously not something you want to do on like a quick impulsive buy. So I start going through it, taking out boxes. And eventually I come across Amazing Spider-Man 300, um, New Mutants 98, New Mutants 87, uh, lots of Silver Age uh, comic books, uh, uh, key characters, key titles, um, long runs of Amazing Spider-Man. Like I was just blown away and I, instantly knew that this was going to be a collection that was great. Most of it was bagged and boarded. Condition was excellent. There looked to be minimal damage and that still seems to be the case. So I really wanted to make the deal, uh, but I had to get the price lower from his $15,000 asking price. I personally did. Now someone else watching this who maybe owns like a, a massive comic book business and has a giant warehouse like Chuck Rosansky from Mile High Comics, he might say, oh yeah, I would have bought that in two seconds. But I'm in a different situation because I don't have a warehouse. And so I've got to figure out where I'm going to store this. And then obviously I still need to go out and source other stuff for my business. So I've got to have a way that I could move through this product at a reasonable rate. And at that time, only doing eBay, I really didn't have a way to move it as fast as I would need to for that much volume. So I told them that I would like to be at five and a half thousand dollars. Now, knowing, by the way, knowing some of you are probably laughing when I say that, but I say that knowing that there was no way that that was going to be the price. And we quickly started talking about that. You know, I realized there's key issues in there and that really can't be the price and we've got to move it up from there. Uh, so, you know, showing him some recognition of that was was important. And ultimately, make a long story short, where we got to with the negotiation was that I was at 7,500 and he was at 10,000. Now I say he, but there's a big wrinkle in this entire story, which is that even though this is his personal collection, the person who had the ultimate say-so in the price was his wife. Now, I didn't get to interact with his wife. I saw her once on the side, like a quick hello kind of thing. But in terms of negotiation, it was always, you know, I would throw him a number, he would throw me a number, and he would say, I'd have to go back and check with my wife. And ultimately, what would happen is he'd come back and say, sorry, she's stuck at the 10,000, and, you know, I can't go lower than that. And she's insisting on that. And that's a tough situation to be in because, you know, you're negotiating with someone who you can't really interact with. And you're also negotiating with someone who's close to the person who you are talking to. So you don't want to be insulting. So it's a very delicate situation. 
Uh, so we basically were at an impasse and I had to walk away from the deal at the time. Now I remember right around the corner here from where I'm sitting here, Pine Time Treasure Headquarters, I was talking to Mr. Buys a lot. Uh, maybe he's watching this right now. Hi, Brian. Uh, and he told me you should just buy it right now. But again, Mr. Buys a lot, different situation. He's got a massive warehouse and you know he's routinely making these you know massive buys. Uh, so for me, this is like a new venture to do and I wanted to be careful. And so um, I would say we also mutually walked away uh, from the deal as well, you know, and there was no bad feelings. It was one of those things where if I change my mind, um, you know, I'll reach back out. If you change your mind, you reach back out. And ultimately what happened after about a year had gone by is that I started selling on whatnot and I did several of these auctions and I realized how much faster I could move product. And I said, this is amazing. This opens all new opportunities for me. I don't have to spend all this time taking pictures of the comics. I could just literally display them live. The site is ideal for comic books. Collectors love to go there. This is awesome. So again, after getting a bunch of them under my belt, I said, I got to reach out to this guy and see if maybe we could do a deal. The problem is I did not have his number saved on my phone. I didn't delete the message. I knew it was somewhere. So long and short of it is I started digging through my emails because that's how he responded to me on Craigslist. And I got back in touch with him. I found his phone number. I sent him the message and I said, hey, remember me? You know, I was uh, wondering, you know, since time has passed, uh, you know, it's been a while. Life circumstances have probably changed for both of us. I'm wondering if now with the passage of time, if there's some way we could bridge that gap between the 7,500 and the 10,000. Now, I was fully expecting to hear back that either he sold it already or that his wife was still stuck at the 10,000. So I couldn't believe it when he wrote me back and he said that it was still available for purchase and he would check with his wife. Now, it took a few weeks for, for me to get a message uh, back ultimately from his wife. Uh, well, it came through him. And he told me that she would be willing to do 8,500. Now, the funny thing about this is that I would have paid up more. And you're probably saying to me, why are you saying that? Because if he watches this, then he's going to know to pay up more. But, but here's the thing, okay? This goes both ways. Because when I went to his house and we started talking uh, about you know getting back in contact, he told me he was going to get in contact with me at the end of the month because he was having second thoughts and he was wanting to sell it to me. So he probably would have taken the 7,500 or the, or maybe 8,000, you know, if I countered and like, I would have gone up to 9,000 or a little bit higher than that. Um, but ultimately sometimes you don't have to say anything and you both kind of just know, and it works out. So I was obviously happy with the 85 and they were happy with the 85 because they offered it. So, um, that's how that all went down. And it just goes to show the importance of being patient, of being willing to walk away. And when you allow yourself to walk away and you allow for the passage of time to occur, well, there's lots of things that happen over that passage of time. Like for me, the whole development of whatnot, that wasn't even anything anyone or few people in reselling were even thinking about at the time. Uh, and in his situation, um, you know, things that have changed in the world for, for everybody too, not just him, but uh, inflation. And so people want more buying power because things are more expensive. So if I could give him an $8,500 check and he knows I'm going to be good for it, well, great. We already have an existing relationship and it worked out perfectly for us. So anyway, um, I, I'm very happy with how the whole thing went down and uh, I'm going to start auctioning comics from this for the first time on Saturday, May 7th. So uh, the link to the auction is going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on whatnot. Definitely come check it out. We're going to have ladies night there. So it's going to be all featured based on the lovely ladies of comic books. So uh, like we're going to have She-Hulk there, Spider-Woman, and you know just so many other cool characters. Dawn, it's going to be amazing. Uh, some of them are going to be signed variants, certificates of authenticity. Like I can't believe the stuff that's in this uh, collection. Uh, and I'm going to keep auctioning stuff off from it um, for however long it takes. A year, two years, three years, once a week. So definitely come on by. Uh, it's going to be a blast. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's about it for now. If you have other questions, let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. I can't uh, wait to see what you have to say. Uh, let's go see what Daisy's doing before we leave. And I'll see you at the next one, everyone. Take care. Hey, Daisy. 
You must be tired after working on all those comic books with me today, right? Everyone wants to say hello to you. There you go. <laughs> People haven't seen you in a while. I'm sorry to bother you. I just woke you up from your little nap. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. What does your shirt say here? What does your shirt say? I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, boss.